the University of Rochester's researchers have created a superconductive material for commercial use. New superconductive materials will become a crucial part of tokamak machines and faster, more efficient electronics. Some scientists are now believing we're at the start of a modern superconducting era. The university created a superconducting material at both a temperature and pressure low enough for practical applications. This is a historical achievement for superconductivity. In a paper published by Nature, the researchers described a nitrogen-doped lithium hydride that exhibits superconductivity at 69 degrees Fahrenheit and 10 kilobars, it's 145,000 pounds per square inch PSI. Ranga Diaz, the Assistant Professor of Mechanics and Engineering and Physics, said, With this material, the dawn of ambient superconductors and applied technologies has arrived. Although 145,000 PSI might seem extraordinarily high, some engineering techniques routinely used in chip manufacturing, for example incorporating materials held together by internal chemical pressure, are way higher than this. Scientists have been pursuing this breakthrough in condensed material physics for more than a century. Superconductive materials have two key properties. The electrical resistance vanishes and the magnetic fields that are expelled pass around the superconductive material. Such materials could enable power grids that transmit electricity without the loss of up to 200 million megawatts an hour of the energy that now occurs due to the resistance in the wires. Frictionless, levitating, high-speed trains. More affordable medical imaging and scanning techniques such as MRI. Faster, more efficient electronics for digital logic and memory device technology. Tokamak machines that use magnetic fields to confine plasma to achieve fusion as a source of unlimited power. Previously, the DS team reported creating two materials that had similar properties, carbonous sulfur hydride and yttrium superhydride. These are both superconducting at 58 degrees Fahrenheit, 39 million PSI, 12 Fahrenheit and 26 million PSI respectively. Given the importance of the new discovery, Diaz and his team went to unusual length to document their research and head off criticism that developed in the wake of the previous Nature paper, which led to a retractment by the journalist editor. The previous paper had been submitted to Nature with new data that validates the earlier work, Diaz says. The new data was collected outside of his lab at the Aragon and Brookhaven National Laboratories in front of an audience of scientists who saw the superconducting transition live. A similar approach has been taken with the new paper. Five graduate students in Diaz's lab are listed as co-lead authors. Diaz added, everyone in the group was involved in doing the experiments, saying it was truly a collective effort. Hydrites created by combining rare earth elements with hydrogen, then adding nitrogen or carbon, have provided researchers with a tantalizing working recipe for creating superconductive materials in recent years. The nitrogen and carbon help stabilize the material. And then because of this, less pressure is required for superconductivity to occur. Letitium was one of the elements that Diaz said was a very good candidate to try. It has a highly localized, fully filled 14 electrons in its F orbit configuration that suppresses the phantom softening and provides an enhancement to the electronic photon coupling needed for superconductivity to take place at ambient temperatures. The key question was how are they going to stabilize the element at the required lower pressure and this is where nitrogen came into the picture. Nitrogen, like carbon, has a rigged atomic structure that can be used to create a more stable cage-like lattice within the material. This structure provides the stability for superconductivity to occur at lower pressure. Diaz's team formulated a gas mixture of 99% hydrogen and 1% nitrogen and then placed it in a reaction chamber with a pure sample of lithium and let the components react for 2-3 to three days at 392 degrees Fahrenheit. The resulting lithium nitrogen hydrogen compound was initially a lustrous blue colour, the paper stated. 
When the compound was then compressed in a diamond anvil, a startling visual transformation occurred, from blue to pink at the onset of superconductivity, and then to a bright red non-superconducting metal state. Diaz added it was very bright red. He humorously suggested a code name for the material at this state as Red Matter, after the material that Spock created in the popular 2009 Star Trek movie. The 145,000 psi of pressure required to induce the superconductivity is nearly two orders of magnitude lower than the previous low pressure created in Diaz's lab. With the funding grant from the US Department of Energy, his lab has now answered the question of whether superconducting materials can exist at both ambient temperature and pressure low enough for practical applications. Dias commented, a pathway to superconducting consumer electronics, energy transfer lines, transportation, and significant improvements of magnetic confinement for fusion are now a reality. We believe we are now at a modern superconducting era. For example, Dias predicted that nitrogen doped lutetium hydride will greatly accelerate progress in developing tokamon machines to achieve fusion. Instead of using power converging laser beams to implode a fuel pellet, Tokamaz relies on strong magnetic fields emitted by donut shaped enclosure to trap, hold and ignite superheated plasma. NDLH, which produces an enormous magnetic field at room temperature, will be a game changer for the emerging technology. Particularly exciting, according to Diaz, is the possibility of training machine learning algorithms with the accumulated data from superconducting experimentations in his lab. This is to predict other possible superconducting materials, in effect, mixing and matching from thousands of possible combinations of rare earth metals, nitrogens, hydrogens and carbons. In day-to-day -day life we have many different metals we use for different applications, so we also need different types of superconducting material. Co-author Keith Lawlor has already begun developing algorithms and making calculations using supercomputing resources available through the University of Rochester Centre for Integrative Research Computing. So now the first basic formula is in hand, and as noted the effort is underway to find even more recipes for a widening range of applications. But this isn't the high capacity transmission line solution yet. The functioning lab unit as far as these discoveries have gone. 